Your Rolex AD hates you. Don't worry about it. So does mine. But you're still in the market for a Rolex. You got all that money saved up. You got your shekels ready. You got your Christmas bonus. And now you're ready to make your very first Rolex purchase. But with so many options out there, do I go with this? Do I go with that? Do I want a Daytona? Do I want a GMT? Do I want a two-tone? The options are endless. Jesus, where do I even start? Don't worry. Relax. Take a deep breath. I'm here to simplify things for you. I'm going to give you my list of the three best intro to Rolex watches ever. And if you argue with me, you're wrong because my list is right. Let's go. Now, before I get into this list, let me break down how I chose them. This isn't the cheapest. This isn't the most affordable Rolexes on the market. This is the best intro to Rolexes if you're a brand new customer, meaning how much bang for my buck am I going to get and overall value. And I know there are a bunch of other brands out there with a bunch of horology that are much less expensive and you have to go against the grain because it's Rolex and you want to hate on it. But this isn't for you. Relax, Grand Seiko lovers. Me? <laughs> I understand there's more beautiful finishes, but this particular video is about the Rolexes. So let's get on with it. Starting off at number three is the beautiful Rolex 36 millimeter Datejust. Reference number 16014 in stainless steel or 16013 in two-tone. It's lug to lug is 43 millimeter and it has the beautiful Rolex 3035 caliber movement. Years of production were from 1977 till 1988. Now let's not kid ourselves, the Datejust is an iconic watch. Having been released in 1945, Rolex Datejust was the first self-winding watch to display a date window on the dial. It was created to celebrate Rolex's 45th anniversary. Since then, it's been nothing short of iconic. With a beautiful date window, fluted bezel, beautiful jubilee bracelets, the 16013 or the 16014 in stainless steel is just the ultimate beginner's dress watch. It's versatile as all hell. I'm choosing this one reference number because overall the design hasn't changed much, even compared to the current models. I think you get a lot of watch and value for what you're paying for. I happen to have one myself and I honestly can't get enough of it. And for those of you that are claiming that the 36 millimeter is too small for someone's wrist, I wear it every single day. And if Tony Soprano, the leader of the Jersey mob, wore a 36 millimeter, your little meat beater wrists are gonna wear a 36 millimeter just fine. Again, the versatility on this watch is unmatched, both beautiful for a night out with a partner or an oil change on your 2006 Corolla. Right now, depending on the condition of the watch, because this varies a lot, you could scoop one up between $4,300 and $4,600. For that price point, if it's your first Rolex, you honestly can't beat it. You're wearing an iconic watch. It's going to retain its value. You're parking your money perfectly in a Rolex Datejust. Now, of course, that doesn't mean I'm a financial advisor, but just look at the market trends and you're going to see what I'm talking about. So far for the last 10 to 15 years, it's been steadily climbing and I don't see it going down anytime soon. The design is just too classic. The Datejust has set so many trends. Its horology is unmatched. It's even been worn by historic figures, including Chuck Yeager, who wore a Datejust when he broke the sound barrier. You can't go wrong. Number two is the iconic Rolex Daytona, reference 16520, or its two-tone brother, 16523, also known as the Zenith Daytona. It has a 12.2 millimeter thickness with a 50.2 millimeter lug-to-lug, -lug, which wears beautiful on the wrist. It's powered by a Rolex Caliber 4030 movement, which is a modified Zenith El Primero movement, which is legendary in the watch community. Now, before I get crucified for putting a Daytona on an intro to Rolex video, remember that I told you that this list wasn't isn't the cheapest or the most affordable. So relax, Frugal Freddies. I understand that this option may be a little bit much, but you're also getting a lot of watch for those people that do have a little bit higher of a budget. Arguably Rolex's most iconic watch, the Daytona has been the center point of Rolex fame for years now. The most expensive one having been a Paul Newman worn 6239 that sold at an auction for a whopping $17.8 million. The first Rolex Daytona was first released in 1963 with race car drivers in mind. It offered precise time keeping and a chronograph movement that could measure speeds for up to 200 miles per hour. Ironically, the popularity was relatively low through the first couple of decades Rolex produced the Daytona. Back in the 1970s, you could scoop up a Daytona for less than a thousand bucks. But now the Rolex Daytona is literally one of the most in-demand watches in Rolex's lineup. In 1988, Rolex introduced its first ever self-winding chronograph, but it didn't use an in-house movement. It actually used a Zenith El Primero movement, which Rolex took 
Cook modified to create the caliber 4030, which was used until 2000. The watch is perfect for those with a higher budget who want to perfectly blend between an ultimate sports watch with the horology that most watch brands envy. My personal favorite is the 16523, which is the two-tone version with a black dial. I think it's beautiful for an everyday wear, also for a really nice night out. And it's a conversation starter with anybody you sit next to. The watch is stunning. It's perfectly symmetrical with the dials. It has this beautiful two-tone action. The black dial is mm, mm, so good. You could just look into it and look at the depths of your soul. It's like looking at your first point, baby. Your money is always safe with a Rolex Daytona because it's always gonna be in demand. And if you ever find yourself at a Daytona 500, you could even figure out how fast the cars are going, right? Eh, you're probably never gonna use the chronograph, but still, it's nice to have one if you ever need it. Right now, you could pick up a 16523 or a 16520, depending on the condition, between 16 and $20,000. And what a watch you are getting. And finally, for my number one intro to Rolex watches is none other than the Rolex Explorer 2 reference 16570. It has a 12.2 millimeter thickness, lug to lug is 47.5 millimeter, and it's powered by the Rolex Caliber 3185, which is actually the same one used in the Rolex GMT2. My God, what an iconic and beautiful watch, and it's probably the gateway drug to you going out there and buying hundreds of Rolexes in your collection. It's kind of like in the 90s when they would tell you if you smoke weed, you were gonna do heroin. Is this a five o'clock free crack giveaway? The Rolex Explorer 2 is the first one that you buy, and then you spend your next mortgage on just watches because it's the addiction, it's the drug, it's what gets you in the door. Rolex's dedicated adventure watch, the Explorer, traces its origins back to mountain climbing in 1953. In 1971, however, another watch joined the collection with the name Explorer 2 and quite different set of features, looks, sizes, and purpose. Rather than for scaling peaks, the original Explorer 2 was intended for plumbing the depths of caves. A 24-hour hand and bezel were meant to keep Arctic explorers oriented when it might be easy to lose track of whether it was day or night. Although it looked like a GMT watch with its prominent arrow-shaped fourth hand and steel bezel, it functioned differently. Unlike a, say, Rolex GMT Master, the bezel was fixed, meaning non-rotating, and the 24-hour hand couldn't be set separately from the main time. The reference 16520 was introduced in 1989 and ran for 22 years until it was discontinued in 2011. I just find the Explorer 2 packed with so much value. It's the ultimate sports watch. Whether you're gonna go down there and play some hoops with your boys, I have no idea what the hell this was. Or you're gonna go out on a nice date out on the town, you're relaxing, you're at the polo club, you're at the chess club, all these nerdy events. It looks perfect when that light shines on that stainless steel bracelet. Mm, it's like, I can't even describe it to you. It has that bright orange GMT hand, which is unmistakable. And the bezel, to be honest with you, beats any single ceramic bezel or any bezel for that matter out there in Rolex's lineup. Plus, it has a GMT function without paying the heavy GMT2 pricing. It has incredible history and an incredible design. And if this is gonna be your first intro to Rolex, I guarantee you no one out there is gonna say that this is a bad call. Investment wise, your money is parked perfectly safe in an Explorer 2. And if you ever do get that itch to trade up, you're perfectly fine doing so because someone is always going to be in demand for this watch. If this is going to be your intro to Rolex, the Explorer 2 just checks every single box I look for. Plus, it just looks badass. It really does. In today's market, you could scoop one up maybe in the early 2000s between $65 and $8,500, depending on the condition of it. So there you have it. That's my list. I know it's controversial, but let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? But don't tell me if it's the most affordable watch. Remember the parameters of this video. It has to be the best intro to Rolex. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your first Rolex was and if it was any of these on this particular list. As always, if you're in the market for a Rolex, hit up gusvillajewelry.com. Call me directly. I'll speak to you and we'll get the watch of your dreams on your wrist for once and for all. You don't have to wait for that AD. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like it. Subscribe to the channel. We got hella content coming up and we'll see you guys in the next one.